for your support. Your giving helps to share the gospel across the world to those who need to know about Jesus' love. There are three ways you can give to Bible Faith Church. The first is e-transfer, bfct at biblefaith.com. The second is by going to our website. Click on the Give tab and choose the campus. Lastly, the Tidely app. Download the app, search for Bible Faith Church. We are so happy you are able to connect with us by giving, and we thank you for your generosity. We are going to be teaching on the prayer of authority. (laughs) Glory to God. So I am surprised at how many Christians don't actually pray and how many Christians really don't know anything about prayer. But let me tell you, in this life, in this world, right now, if you don't know how to pray, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be in trouble. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 and 7, three times he said, when you pray. He did not say, if you pray. In these verses, Jesus also talked about those things that I, in previous sessions, have called commonalities of the characteristic of the person who is praying. He said, prayer is communicating with God. He said that we need to be honest and direct with God. And he said that we need to be personal and intimate with our Father God. And then he goes from there, and you know he teaches on the Lord's Prayer. Now, a lot of people have misunderstood the Lord's Prayer, and I've taught. That was the very first prayer I taught on, and you need to go back and listen to that message because the Lord's Prayer is not something you're supposed to repeat over and over again because he actually, before he teaches on the Lord's Prayer, he says, don't be like those hypocrites that repeat the words over and over and over again. And now we got Christians going around going, my Father who art in heaven, thy being that... You know, they don't know what they're doing. That was a model. It was an outline of what you need to do when you go before God and you pray. You start with glorifying your father. You start with worshiping him. And then you go on and he showed us all the things that we have to do when we pray. It was not supposed to be, you know. All the Catholics know what I mean by that. Paul in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, tells us that praying, he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints in the Spirit. So first of all, you need to be in the Spirit when you pray. And then as you pray in the Spirit, He will unfold to you the type of prayer that you have to pray at that time. You know, I remember many, many years ago, people used to call intercessory prayers. And I'm going to talk about that. But they used to call, okay, we're going to have intercessory prayer tonight. Listen, you can't dictate when you have intercessory prayer. Because intercessory prayer is taking on the sorrow, the hurt, the agony of the person that you're praying for. As if you were that person. And only the Holy Spirit can do that in prayer. Put that on you. It's like he puts on All of that. And you're praying and crying out through the heart of that person that you're actually praying for. It's a tremendous prayer. It's not something we just decide, oh, tonight I'm going to intercessory prayer. No, tonight you're going to prayer. And then what happens there is up to the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? When we come praying corporately. The New International Version of Ephesians 6.18 says it like this. Praying on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Now, you remember I told you that when we were studying the armor of God, that the very last part of the armor is the lance, and that the lance in the Roman soldier's artillery and toolbox were various kinds of lances. And that's where we get this idea of the fact that that lance part of the armor is prayer. Because of, and because then Paul continues and says, praying always with all kinds of prayers. Amen? And so we need to understand the prayers that we have available to us. God has given us an artillery of prayers, of communication with him, that we can take and make. Move mountains. Move mountains. See, do you believe that with your words you can move mountains? Well, if you don't believe that, you need to get back into the word and meditate and do what Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, to meditate, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You need to know who you are. Do you know who you are? Or are you accepting what everybody else is telling you you are? You're a mighty moving force. 
with the power and anointing of the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you. You're not some weakling person that allow. You know what uh, Peterson said? He says, right now, most people, most students don't even understand that they actually have agency. You know what agency means? It's control over their own life. Meanwhile, you know, all that we do in curriculum is talk about agency. And these kids don't even know. We use the word agency and everybody goes, agency? Like what? Is that like a place I go to to apply for a job? The agency? No, it means having control over your life. Not allowing everybody else to dictate who you are, what you can do. Glory to God. In scripture, we see that there are many kinds of prayers. And so today, I guess maybe that's why I'm talking the way I'm talking. Because today we're going to be talking about the prayer of authority. Prayer of authority. Oh, my God, what an amazing prayer. What a misunderstood prayer. And how much criticism we get in the body of Christ for those who believe in Jesus and pray this way. We get so criticized because we pray with authority. What do you want me to pray like? Oh, please, Lord. Uh, I don't know if you're up there. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but, you know, like, I'm dying here. Can you help? Please? Okay. If you don't, then this is the burden you've given me. Like, if you don't know that God does not give you the burden of sickness no. and that Jesus took it upon his own body, every sickness and disease, the Bible says that God sent his word and healed you. Mm-hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not going to, the devil's not going to try to kill you with disease, but you better not lie down and play dead. No, you rise up and you say, no way, Jose. I'm sorry if your name is Jose. No way. John 15, 7 says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Listen, this is the context of the prayer of authority. But so many people just read that as a flowery scripture. Do you know what Jesus is saying here? If you abide in me. Most people don't even abide, never mind in him. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. So what do you have to be the home for? The word of God. Then you will ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. The amplified version of the scripture says it like this. If you live in me. If you abide vitally united to me and my words remain in you and continue to live in your hearts, ask whatever you will and it shall be done for you. Contextually, this verse sits within a discourse that Jesus is having with his disciple about relationship. It's about relationship. Listen, you don't have authority to fix your pinky. In yourself, you are what the world just tosses around. But in Christ and with the word of God residing and abiding powerfully inside of you, you are powerful. Your words have authority. God's ear is attentive to your voice. God Almighty The angel said, what is man that you would make and take such care in creating him? I'll tell you what man is. He is in the image and likeness of God. We are not animals. We are not weird. We are not uh, Darwinian evolutions. We are created in the image and likeness of God Almighty. Amen. And he has given us delegated authority on the earth. Glory to God. Man, this is powerful. It is not a statement made just to anyone that wants to be casual with God or have a part-time relationship with Jesus and the Father. This is a, a message given. The prayer of authority is given to believers who are committed 110%. 
I know that's bad math. 110% to God. To living what God wants you to live. How he wants you to live. That you speak what he speaks. That you think what he thinks. Oh, that's just getting brainwashed. Thank you, Jesus, for washing my brain from all that disgusting stuff that is out there in the world. Amen. Do you know what I, I determined many, many, many years ago? Because like you, I, I questioned myself. I thought, how about if there's no God? How about if this is just like all a big waste of time? You know what I thought? I thought living like this is 100% better than living without it. Yeah. In the world, you don't know if you're coming or going, if you're up or down, sideways. You don't know who your friend is, who your enemies is better. Your enemies are better than your friends. Like, you don't know. But in God, he takes you and he sustains you. The wind and the waves still know his name. Jesus is speaking to his followers. And by followers, what I mean is that they have left everything to follow him. That Jesus in their lives is the vine and they're just simply the branches that are sucking all the life that they need from the vine that never runs dry. Amen. They acknowledge that Jesus is their life source and that without him, there is no life. Those are the people that he was talking to when he said to them, you will ask anything and it will be done for you. Not some guy who's like still questioning, I don't know. I don't know. Was Jesus real? Like some people say he was just, uh, you know, some guy, political activist. I mean, after all, there were so many Jesuses in those days. Well, there were. And you know, there's a scripture that actually goes, speaks to that. It says that he was so common that they missed it. That there was nothing elaborate about him. Isn't that beautiful? Because you know what? Some people may have called you common and non-elaborate. So join the club with Jesus. Hallelujah. When we read the, what Jesus said in John 15, 7, understanding these things, we can understand what it, it is saying to us and so much more. People, like I said before, argue a great deal about the prayer of authority because they do not understand the context. They think that we're bossing God around. Like, duh, that we're bossing God around when we demand something. Listen, my kids come to my house and they just ask for things. They're not bossing me around. They know they're my kids. My grandson... Send us a video. About three weeks ago, he was in the backyard, and the backyard was still winterized, you know, and so he sent a Nana and Nono a video. And he said, Nono and Nana, I want you to know that it's time to open the Sicilia Park, and I will give you until May 30th to do so. Do you know that that did not offend me? It actually gave me so much pleasure. It brought so much joy that he would feel the confidence that he could ask that in that way and that he knew that we would do it. And so we beat him and we opened it last Sunday. Now, that's why my legs, my arms, my back, man, I didn't know how much pain you could have from bending and squatting and digging and tying and holding, you know. Pastor Gaetano, we're putting up the lights on our, we call it the, uh, what do we call that? Sultan's tent because you know we got a tent in the back so we call it the Sultan's tent because of the colors and everything right and so we're putting up lights because Nicole says they must have lights and they have to be put up a certain way and he's going you know honey I don't have that dexterity I used to have anymore and I said Tim okay I'll hold it for you so he's on a ladder and I'm holding up these lights and I'm thinking hurry up because I can't hold it either <laughs> but see we didn't have it in us but because of the way that he asked we did it and we did it with love and joy and such awe. We thought, that is our grandson, man. And we don't want anybody to blow that out of him. Glory to God. Today, by the help of the Holy Spirit, I want to solidify for you what we're doing. When we as believers 
intricately connected with Jesus, pray the prayer of authority just as Jesus told us to. So let's read John 15 again in understanding all these things that I've said thus far. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. Now this word ask in the Greek is the word aieto, which means it, is, it appears approximately 80 times in the New Testament. So you know that God is serious about this. And uh, it is the third most common word used for prayer in the New Testament. It means to ask or demand. See, I didn't make up that. It's the word that the Holy Spirit used to bring this understanding to us that tells us what it is. It describes someone who's authoritatively demands something from God. It describes someone who knows what he or she wants and is not afraid to boldly enter the throne of grace. Listen, if you don't know that you're abiding in Christ and his word is abiding in you, you're not going to enter the throne room of God. You're staying outside because you know you've been messing up like crazy. You don't know him. You don't like him. You, you question him. So you're not going to go into the throne room of grace with God. But the person who's praying this prayer of authority does know their God. It describes someone who knows their God. It Primarily, it has to do with tangible needs. See, there's another scripture that says, listen, God knows what you need already. Jesus said, listen, God already knows what you need. Do you, this is why I said I don't serve an absent-minded God. He knows that we're flesh and blood. He knows I need to eat. He knows I need to drink. He knows I need to live somewhere. He knows I know I have to dress nice and look good on TV. He knows the things that you need and he is wanting to give them to you. So when you, like my grandson, come and say, Father, I need a new outfit. Because like, let me tell you, this one here is tattered and people have seen it a million times. There's nothing wrong with that. When you say to him, Lord, prices are high in Toronto right now. I can't buy a house. But you know what? Your treasury is much greater than the economy. So I'm going to believe that you're going to give me ideas you're going to give me the finances Amen. to be able to purchase a dwelling place for me and my family. Amen. John 15, 7 could be translated, you shall demand what you will. This is Jesus talking. It is easy to see why Jesus made this statement when, he, when we remember that the first part of the scripture says that we are abiding in him and his word is abiding in us. That is the key. The abiding in God is the key to the prayer of authority. We are not bossing God around. We are entering the throne room of God where we know we are welcome and we are taking our position as heirs according to Jesus that he has made us co-heirs with him. Listen, Jesus prayed the prayer of authority while he was on the earth. When he said to the water, you stop, that was the prayer of authority. When he said to Lazarus, come out, that was the prayer of authority. When he said to the guy who was lying on the bed, get up and take your mattress out of here, you're stinking up the place, that is the prayer of authority. No, he didn't say that. I just added that for humor because you guys are all so tense. When we look at the various translations of John 15, 7, we see clearly that abiding means to remain, to stay, to continue. The Greek word is meno, which means to stay, to dwell, to lodge, to remain, to indwell, to continue, to remain in constant union with or to take up permanent residency in. Have you taken permanent residency in Christ Jesus? The Greek denotes constancy, not a transient connection with God. One day you are a believer, the next day you don't know, the next day you're not. No, you know that you know that you know, and no one's going to change that. And even if they say, say, you know, they put you in a half nelson and say, say you're not, say you're not, you're going to say, no, no, I am. It's like when the disciples were taken before the Sanhedrin and they said, you need to stop preaching and doing miracles in this name of Jesus. And they said, well, whether it's according to you or not, we got to do what Jesus said to do. And we got to follow God, not you. You can do whatever you want to us, but we're not going to stop. 
Jesus knew that if, notice his words, if his words took up permanent residency in our hearts and minds, then we would never ask stupid things like kill my neighbor's wife because I like her husband. Yeah, you heard me. There are people praying for other people's spouses or other people's houses or other people's churches. No, 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 no. That's not the way God does it. He doesn't destroy one to lift up the other. Well, what kind of God do you serve anyway? Remember when uh, the disciples came to the, uh, Jesus and said, you know, like, let's call down fire and kill them. And he said, you don't realize what, you're, what spirit you're of. That's not the way the kingdom of God and my father operate. When we allow the word of God, to permanently live in our hearts and change the way that we think, that word will transform us so that when we pray and demand, we do so in agreement with the word of God, with the will of God, and with the plans of God in every situation and need. Jesus knew that we would never ask something out of line from the Father's will or the Father's word. That's why he said to his, what? Disciples. Demand of God and he will do it for you. When we are transformed, we can enter boldly into the throne room of grace like Hebrews 4.16 says, so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. So let's walk right up to him and get what he is so ready to give. Take the mercy, accept the help, the message Bible says. Amen. That's not a coward. That's not a cowardly way of entering. That's a bold way of entering God's presence and saying, listen, I know who you are. I love you. I know you've changed my life and I need some food for my family right now. Or I need this body to be healed right now. Because remember, this prayer is predominantly for natural needs that we have in our lives. The prayer of authority is based on our decision to abide in him and to allow his word to abide in us. Another place that we see this specific type of prayer is in 1 John 5, 14 to 16, when it says, This is the confidence that we have in him, that we, if we ask anything according to my will, no, according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we will have the petitions or the requests that we desire of him. Here again, we see asking with authority or demanding, and it relates to God's will and his word for our lives being uh, that it's what it is that God wants our lives to be. Amen? And that the word is abiding in us and in our hearts constantly, permanently. Knowing God's will, which is knowing his word, it creates confidence in uh, every believer. Confident in the Greek is the word parazea, which depicts a person that is exceedingly bold or courageous. And these types of people don't beg. They know their position. They know their authority. They are bold. They are confident and in the relationship that they have with their father. See, if you can't be like that with our father God, it means you don't know the type of relationship that you have with him. So the first thing you need to do is go and find out who you are in Christ Jesus. That's the basics. 101 of identification with Christ. Who am I? Who am I, God? Am I who everybody else says I am? Or am I who you say I am? Mighty 
in God. God is not offended by people who have an intimate relationship with him because they are speaking and asking according to his will. And he is just like me with my grandson. When, you know, when we come in there, we say, God, I need food. God, I need a place to live. God, I need a car because the one that I have is just not good. And not only that, but did you hear they're killing people on the subway? So I need my own car. Get away from those creepy people that are just doing it for fun. I need you to protect me. You don't want the car? You want to use the transit? Then you say, Father, you are my shield. And I demand that protection as I go. When I leave and when I enter, I am protected by you. My children are protected by you. There is no one going to molest my kids in Jesus' name. No one's going to take advantage of my children. Nobody's going to bully them to think that they are not who they are and who God says they are. Amen. The word of God and intimacy with him has transformed the person who is asking. We see this word again, Iedo, in James 1, 5 and 6. Now, if you don't know James, man, you better know James. He is a man of authority. And he says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him demand it of God. And the one giving generously to all and not finding fault. And it will be given to him. But when you ask or demand, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. This is the Berean liberal Bible or literal Bible. This makes so much sense when you understand that the demanding for wisdom comes from a position that the person asking is already aware and familiar and abiding in the word of God. And in Christ Jesus. James again, like Jesus in John 15, was not speaking to casual believers or visitors of the word. He was speaking to people who are in relationship with God, in relationship with the vine. They're abiding in the vine. Amen? Amen. He was speaking to people that are permanent residents in Christ Jesus. And in the word of God, the person that abides in Christ is not asking for wisdom outside of the word. But rather, he or she is asking for revelation and wisdom alongside with the word. In other words, they're asking for revelation and enlightenment and clarity in the situation. A lot of times when people ask for wisdom, they're really trying to convince God not to tell them to do what he's telling them to do. This is why the scripture, so understanding that, that, that James says that from the perspective of you're already walking in the word and in the wisdom of the word. This is why the scripture goes on to say not finding fault because there is no fault to find when one is abiding in Christ Jesus, abiding in the word of God, doing the word. You're not doing your own thing, running after your own desires and the lusts of the flesh. You are thinking of what God wants you to do, how God wants you to live. You're living by the moral standard that is established through the word of God. And that's why I said what I said at the beginning, and I won't repeat it. But my God doesn't make any mistakes. Iedo is also found in 1 John 3, 22, when it says, and we will receive from him whatever we ask because we obey him and do the things that please him. See that? We obey him and we do things that please him. Notice that the person demanding is keeping God's commandments, that he is doing what pleases God. In all the references that we have looked at where the prayer is praying, the prayer of demand and authority, we clearly see that it's all about relationship, all about intimacy, all about obedience to the word of God, and all about consistency with God and his word and his spirit. Don't be afraid to pray the prayer of authority and demand things from your father. He is not offended by your asking, by your demanding, because he realizes you know who you are. It brings joy to God when you go into the throne room of grace and say, and grace and say hey, you said in your word, 
And so I'm expecting you to do it, and I want it done now. Like, there's no what, but if I couldn't be, I don't know, the economy. No. Demanding what we need because he is already, Jesus said he's already provided it all. Listen, he's provided salvation. Do you think these other things are any bigger? Psalm 147, 11 says, The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. It's his love that is causing those things to come to you. It's the love of my grandchildren that made me use my muscles in ways that I've never used for a long time. Psalm 37, 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. This is not speaking to a casual believer in the word of God. This is speaking to someone who is sold out to their heavenly father that is abiding in Christ and allowing the word to dominate everything they say, think, and do. Do what the Lord wants. And he, this is what the contemporary English version says of Psalm 37, 4. Do what the Lord wants and he will give you your heart's desires. It's that people don't want to do what God wants. They want to do what they want, and they want God to go along with it. Well, let me tell you, you've got it wrong, and it's not going to happen. So you can pray all you want. He doesn't even hear you, the Bible says. Praying with authority and demanding what is ours is the right of the heir, and we are heirs and co-heirs with Christ as we abide and live our lives connected to the vine. Romans 8, 17 says that. And the connection begins with salvation. You can't even imagine how thankful I am that I am saved. You can't even imagine. I know where I would be without God. Romans 10, 9 tells us what is needed to enter into a relationship with God. It says, it's, you know, and I've been reading Romans 10, 9 and 10 over and over again. Because everybody says, oh, is that all it is? As if it's nothing. As if it's nothing. But it's the most powerful part of our lives with God. He, and this is all he requires. Declare that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead by God. Why? Why do we have to do those things? He tells us that in Romans 10, 10. It is with the heart that we believe and are justified. And it is with the mouth that we profess our faith that we are saved. If you don't know Jesus, if you're in this room or you are online and you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, today is the day to make him your Lord, to make him your Savior. So just declare with your mouth wherever you are, Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. He is not in the grave. He is not like everybody else. That's why we know we have the truth. Because he's alive. Our God is alive. And he reigns. And he loves us. And when you have that connection and that knowledge, then go boldly into the throne room of grace and demand what is rightfully yours. And you tell the devil, you are defeated. You are a liar. And you are under my feet. In Jesus' name. Well, we want you to know that God loves you. We love you. And this is our church. Amen.